Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Mr. Matt and this is Dr. Tot. Dr. Tot, cookie to start class? Very good. And welcome to SAT ACT prep. This is quick drill set B to evaluating remainders. As we've been talking about in the previous sessions, remember that when we are evaluating a pattern, we can identify the non-repetitious segment, that is the portion that makes up the pattern, the portion that is repeated to make the pattern. And if we divide the total amount of units that we're asked about by the number of positions or values in that non-repetitious segment, we can use the remainder to interpret how many positions we can go further into the next repetition when we can't make another whole one, or how many whole times the pattern repeats. And there are many different contexts in which um, they can, that can manifest itself in an SAT question. But we're going to look at a few more examples today, um, so let me go ahead and share my screen with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. If these uh, videos are helpful to you, please like, favorite, and subscribe, and share with your friends, and I appreciate everybody's uh, support. And welcome to everybody, uh, the new subscribers. This document will be on Certified Learning Center's website. Just make sure that you're looking at the reference number 1006-8. The link and the information on how to get that both in Word and PDF form will be in the description of this video. Okay, so I'll recommend, excuse me, I recommend that uh, after you read the problem with me aloud, you pause the video, attempt the question, then unpause the video to watch the solution. So number one asks, a teacher brings enough cookies to give each of his 30 students three cookies. If seven students decide they don't want their cookies, how many cookies remain when there are not enough to make sure all students who want cookies get the same number of cookies? So take a few moments and attempt that problem, please. So this problem is somewhat cross-sectional. It definitely involves interpreting the remainder, but it also um, has to do with the corollary to the average formula. So an average is equal to the sum of all values divided by the number of terms, which I'm just going to represent here as n. The corollary to this is if I multiply on both sides by n, notice that this is tel telling me that if I know the number of values, the number of items, and I know their average amount, I can always find their sum. Another way of thinking of the sum is the total amount. So if I bring enough cookies for 30 students to each get three cookies, then 3 times 30 means that this teacher brings a total of 90 cookies. Now, if 7 students out of his 30 students don't want cookies, now we're going to have 30 minus 7, or 23 students, to split the, students, uh, split the cookies between. Let me label that. We have 90 cookies and we have 23 students. So if we take 90 divided by 23, we're going to get a nasty number, 3. Point about 9. Point, excuse me, 3.913 thereabout. Um, that decimal continues on, but I'm just going to include those values because really I'm not too worried about the three. That just tells me that each uh, student will only get three cookies. Um, however, if I back that three out and look at that remainder, that represents 91.3 percent into the next 23 cookies that remain. So if I multiply by the original divisor of 23, so when you calculate back out three and then multiply by 23, and you're going to get 21. So when seven students aren't able or don't want 
give up their cookies and give them up to the rest of the remaining class, it actually doesn't change the total amount because in order for all students to have this equal number of cookies, then they can't go over three cookies each. Um, but the answer here is going to be 21. 21 cookies remain when you can't give another student to make sure that all students get the same number of uh, cookies. Number two, a teacher brings enough cookies to give each of his 27 students three cookies. If eight students decide they don't want cookies, how many cookies remain when there are not enough to make sure all students who want cookies get the same number of cookies? So please take a few moments and solve that problem. So again, if we multiply the 27 students times the three cookies per student, we're going to find that this teacher brought 81 cookies to class. Now if 8 students decide that they don't want cookies, now we're going to have 27 minus 8, which is 19 students to split the 81 cookies between. So if we have 81 divided by 19, we're going to get 4.263. Again, it's going to go on, but we're going to get rid or back out that 4 because that just represents that each student is now going to get 4 cookies instead of 3. But this remainder of 0 0.263, we're going to multiply by our original divisor of 19, and you're going to get 5. So there would be five cookies remaining when we're able to give each student one more cookie because the eight students gave up their cookies. And number three, a professor brings enough cookies to give each of his 234 students four cookies. If 34 students decide they don't want their cookies, how many cookies remain when there are not enough to make sure all students who want cookies get the same number of cookies? So take a few moments and solve that problem, please. So again, if we take the 234 students times the four cookies each that they are planning to receive or that the, the professor is planning to give them, 234 times four is going to be 936 cookies. And 34 students decide to not get cookies. So 234 minus 34 is just going to be 200. So now we're going to have 200 students to split the 963 cookies between. So if we take 200, excuse me, 936 and divide it by 200, we're going to get 4.68. So now each student, that means it's going to get four cookies with a remainder in total of 68% of the next 200 cookies. So if I back out that 4 integer portion of 4 and then multiply by 200, that's going to tell me that there's 136 cookies remaining when we can't give another, all other students who want cookies, equal number of cookies. Or I should say an additional cookie without, with making sure that everybody has the same number of cookies. Let me move that so you can see that on the screen. So it's 136 for question number three. Question number four. Tickets at a raffle are given in the following order. Four purple, seven gold, three red, five green, and then repeats with four purple and so on. How many gold tickets will be given out if there are a total of 1,000 tickets? So pause the video and attempt that problem, please. So we need to look at how many unique color positions are in this non-repetitious portion of the pattern. We have four purple, seven gold, three red, five green. So that's 19 unique color positions. If we have a total of 1,000 tickets and 19 unique color positions, if we take 1,000 divided by 19, that's going to be 52.631 about. I'm just rounding there or just I'm just going to leave just the first three digits. 
expressed. So that means we're going to go through this pattern 52 whole times. So notice how the interpretation here changes depending on the context of the question. So now they're asking me how many gold tickets in total will be given out. Well, every time we go through this pattern, we're giving out seven gold tickets. So now the integer portion of this answer is relevant because 52 repetitions times seven gold tickets is going to give us 364 gold tickets just from the whole repetitions of the pattern. But now we need to investigate where this pattern ends because it might end with additional gold tickets being given out even though it doesn't go into doesn't complete that whole next pattern or repetition of that pattern. So if we back out the integer portion of the answer we just get that 0 0.631 and I actually did some other calculation here, this uh, 52 times 7. So in my calculator, in order to capture that whole decimal, I'm going to go back and do 1,000 divided by 19. Now I'm going to back out the 52, and so my calculator has that exact huge decimal stored in its memory. Now I'm going to multiply by the original divisor of 19, and I'm going to get 12. So that means we're going to go 12 positions into the next repetition or that last repetition that doesn't get completed. So notice that there's four purple and then there's eight remaining positions, right? Because 12 minus 4 would be 8. So we do go through a whole nother set of seven gold tickets at the end of this because actually we would have after we've given out the 52, we've gone through the pattern 52 times, we would have four more purple tickets, seven more gold tickets, and then we would end on the in the 12th color position at the first red ticket. So we're going to have another seven gold tickets from that remaining pattern all the way at the end. So that's going to be 371. Question number five asks, tickets at a raffle are given in the following order, four purple, eight gold, five red, nine green, and then repeats with four purple and so on. How many gold tickets will be given out if there are a total of 2,000 tickets? So please take a few moments and solve that problem. So if we start by identifying the number of unique positions in the non-repetitious segment of the pattern, we have four, four purple, eight gold, five red, nine green. So four plus eight is 12. 12 plus five is 17. 17 plus nine is 26. So we have a total of 2,000 tickets being distributed and 26 unique color positions. So 2,000 divided by 26 is 76.923 or thereabout. So if we go through this pattern a total of 76 times, and each time there are 8 gold tickets, then I know just from that alone we have 76 times 8, that's 608 tickets, just from repeating the pattern itself. But we also need to investigate that remainder, because more than likely, because that remainder represents 92.3% of the next 26 positions in the next pattern, um, right at the end of that pattern, it probably will include these gold because notice that the gold is the second color and um, we're going through 92% of the pattern. So backing out the 76, we're just going to get that 0 0.923 and again I did another calculation so I'm going to go back to 2000 divided by 26. I'm going to subtract away the 76 integer portion and now multiply by the original divisor of 26 and I'm going to get 24. So the 2,000th ticket at the very end is going to be in the 24th color position. So it's going to be the third from the end, 
right? So it's going to be, where are we? It's going to be uh, the seventh green ticket is where we're going to end. Um, so that means we're going to include a whole other eight gold tickets in that remaining repetition. So we'd have to add another eight to this to get 616. So we'd have 616 gold tickets distributed if 2,000 tickets are given out. And last problem, number six, tickets at a raffle are given in the following order, seven purple, five gold, three red, seven green, and then repeats with seven purple and so on. How many gold tickets will be given out if there are a total of 2,500 tickets? So please pause the video and attempt that problem. So looking at the number of uh, non-repetitious unique positions in this uh, non-repetitious segment of the pattern, we have 7, 5, 3, and 7. So that's going to be 22. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 7 is 22. So we have a total of 2,500 tickets. We have 22 unique color positions. So 2,500 divided by 22 is going to be 113 point about, well, it's 6-3 bar, because the 6-3 repeats on, over and over again. So if we have 113 total repetitions of this pattern, and within each pattern we have five gold tickets, just from the whole repetitions, we would have 113 times 5 is 565. But if we investigate this remainder, I'm going to subtract out that 113, oops, and now I'm going to multiply, so this is going to give me 0 0.63 bar, just the remainder, um, but now I'm going to multiply by the original divisor of 22, and that's going to give me 14. So the 25th hundredth, uh, the 2,500th ticket is going to be in the 14th color position. So 7 plus 5 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. So it's going to be, um, it's definitely going to be, it's going to end on a red, but we're going to include the next five gold tickets in that. So we need to add another five to our answer. And so our final answer is going to be 570. Oops. 570. Oh, come on. Pen's not cooperating here. 570. Alright, if you have any questions, then please leave a comment below. If Again, if these are helpful, please like and subscribe. Dr. Tot, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Come on. We finished. You got to say goodbye. We had a good class. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Let's see. Can you say bye? Dr. Tot, can you say bye? You say bye? Come on, that's not bye. Come on, bye. Bye. <laughs> you can do it better than that. Bye. All right, very good. All right, thank you guys very much. I hope you have a wonderful night, and I'll talk to you all soon.